Well, good morning, scholar. You look comfortable. You're ready to start filming? Prof, it's like nine in the morning. What are you doing here? What do you mean filming? Like, I'm not dressed. We're not even at the flashback offices. Like, good grief, man. What's going on? Oh, yes, we are. Didn't you get my message? From now on, we're filming right here. Isn't it great? The one with the Rick Rowe video attached? I thought you were fucking joking. No, you know I love Rick Astley. And that was my way of saying, when it comes to you and this flashback, I'm never gonna give you up. Got me reminiscing back to when days were great Got me wishing it was 1988 Got me reminiscing back to when times were great Got me wishing it was 1988 What's up Lime Nation and welcome back to your one true source for old school hip hop The Rap Flashback, February 2017 We'd like to welcome you to our new filming location right here on Three Stripes Ave, Suite 187, straight out of Boston, Massachusetts. We hope you enjoy the new set and look forward to continue administering your monthly dose of hip-hop history. Let's get rolling. The Fugees were one of the most artistic, exciting, and successful groups of the early to mid-90s. The trio of Praz, Wyclef Jean, and the lovely Lauren Hill, then known as El Boogie, were able to finesse their collective musical, stylistic, and emceeing talents to become one of the most storied groups hip-hop has ever seen. Their careers took off in earnest with the release of their major label debut, Blunted on Reality, on February 1st, 1994. Despite the very catchy single, Nappy Heads, which to this day remains one of, if not the Fuji track of choice for this particular scotter, and other notable singles such as Vocab and Boof Bath, the album was not very successful commercially. It only moved about 12,000 units at the time. That said, however, in large part due to the buzz created by the Nappy Heads remix, if nothing else, the Fugees did gain a lot of visibility amongst true school hip-hop heads at the time. They may not have knocked it out the park with the release of Blunted on Reality, but they got on base, firmly entrenching themselves as a crew to look out for at the time. It wasn't until they released their second album, The Score, on February 13, 1996, that Wyclef, Praz, and El Boogie truly gained the notoriety their talents merited. The sophomore jinx did not apply to the Fugees. In fact, it was quite the opposite. If Blunted on Reality was a bloop single to first, the score was a grand slam. It peaked at number one on the Billboard 200 on its way to six times platinum certification. Powered by standout singles Killing Me Softly, Fuji La, Ready or Not, and No Woman No Cry, the album was all the buzz on both the commercial and hip hop airways for a good chunk of 1996. It won two Grammys, one for Best Rap Album, and the other for Best R&B Performance by a duo or group with vocals for Killing Me Softly. It also featured several album tracks that were absolute fire, such as How Many Mics, Zealots, and my personal favorite, Manifest. Very few MCs, male or female, have ever ripped the mic like Miss Lauren Hill did on Manifest. And if you've never heard the track, you're playing yourself. Do yourself a favor, give the score a listen, and tweet us at JP Lime with your thoughts. This album was so good that since its release, the Fuji's first record, Blunted on Reality, has sold 130,000 more copies than it did upon its release. How's that for a follow-up effort? Sadly, the score would be the last album the Fuji's would create together. All three members pursued solo careers, each experiencing early success, particularly Lauryn Hill with her five-time Grammy Award-winning project, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. Pra scored a big hit with Ghetto Superstar, which included the single of the same name that featured 90s R&B songs for Smaya and the late great Old Dirty Bastard. Wyclef's The Carnival featured a bevy of hits that included Guantara Mera, Gone to November, and We Trying to Stay Alive. Wyclef has also gone on to produce hits for the likes of international stars such as Shakira, Celia Cruz, and Mary J. Blige. Group tensions between the Fugees all but eliminated any shot of the trio reuniting. But even if they don't, they'll forever go down in history as one of hip-hop's greatest acts. And that's that natural lie that the refugees bring. Today on the Flash Forward, we're going to talk about a recent Drink Chaps podcast that touched on a concept I found very interesting. Ageism in hip-hop. For those not hip to the game, Drink Champs is a podcast hosted by the super thug himself, N-O-R-E, Nori, stands for now we on the run, Eaton, and one of Miami's finest, DJ FN. Their guests on this particular podcast were one of hip-hop's hottest and most socially conscious duos, Run the Jewels. Killer Mike and LP had this to say. When you hear new school hip-hop, is it like, or is it like, 
Whatever. Let these young brothers do their thing. I'm like, this shit jamming. Right. What a whole time. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm from, I, like, I'm from the South. I grew up in Atlanta, so half my day right. was Luke, the dogs, Two Live Crew, uh-huh. Uncle Al. Right. The other half my day was Outkast, Goody Mob, Wu Tang, Capone, Nori, Nas. Mm-hmm. Right. So for me, it, I'm comfortable in this space because I get cool. to get fucked up listening to all the shit that's real hip hop and all the shit that's variations of it. I ain't bothered by none of them. I'm encouraged yeah. by all of it. I, I never, I never like, understood that shit. I never understood. I don't. I mean, you know, I just don't. What, what you understood? Um, I don't. Un- no, I don't understand how people can't find something joy, good in the joy new, in the in, in, the, in, the, new in the music that's happening now. Like, I, I agree. With that's you. all. I mean, here at the flashback, we agree with the sentiment and have conveyed such in the past. Sure, some of the new music and new artists that are out are crappy, but that's always been the case in any musical genre. There's always been crappy 80s hip-hop, crappy 90s hip-hop, crappy gangster rap, crappy gospel rap, crappy jiggy bling rap, crappy rock and roll music, crappy jazz music, crappy salsa, crappy merengue, crappy reggaeton, plenty of crappy JP Lime music. No, Scarlett, no! You know what, Prof, you're right, my bad. The entire freaking catalog sucks. That's not what I meant, Scholar. In any event, in any event, the point here is that there's always going to be a lot of good music, too, across all genres except JP Line. And if you don't like some of the newer artists simply because you haven't given their newer versions of hip-hop a chance, you're going about it the wrong way. Don't take it from me. Take it from a hip-hop legend like Nori. Here are some of his thoughts regarding cats like Migos and Ray Shrumbert. Said that is the hottest record out, yeah. and if you're an old nigga, you don't like it, you just a hater. Right. I think that the more legends embrace the new guys, it's gonna make the culture broader. If we don't, we don't. Basically, and one more salient point from Killer Mike Nori and the boys, just for good measure. A lot of niggas who say that just ain't getting no pussy say. either. Like, let's be yeah. frank. Let's be honest. Every say? nigga who say that just is a non pussy getter. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Niggas be saying that shit because you can't be with no hoes. You can't right. be goblin. <laughs> Women, ladies, whatever the fuck you. You cannot be with them and not hear the jams. You just right. can't. And right. a lot of them like jams as real or not real, however you see it. Right. But man, if you ever been in an Atlanta club and right. the motherfucking Migos came on right. and you was half a ball or half blunt or anything, you walk out of there understand check it out it works both ways it's not just the youth movement too often being hated on by the older guard in hip-hop a lot of older folks get hated on too by younger people and even other older cats it's like after a certain age you're not allowed to be innovative cool successful in hip-hop anymore that's some whack shit lp chimes in Here's, here's what I think about that. What I think is that there's, I think that there's better and better music being made by people who are close to their 40s right. and in their 40s now. Because you got more experience. You have more. I mean, look, right. not, you know, there's you have one task. When right. the task is, you don't want to become boring. You right. don't want to not relate to people who are listening to your music. And if you stay sharp, you're not going to do that. But right. also, there's this, there there's an experience that comes. The one thing that's cool about getting older. So there you have it. Ageism in hip hop. We at the Rap Flashback feel that, like the late great Aaliyah put it, age ain't nothing but a number. So it shouldn't matter how old you are or what version of hip hop you're putting out. If it's whack, it's whack, and if it's crap, it's crap. Don't buy into all that blind ageism and hip hop nonsense, because that's whack too. How's that for some flash forward thinking? It is Drink Chats Motherfucking Podcast. Make Thanks you some noise! And to close out the show, let's wish a happy hip-hop birthday to the following February babies. Half of the iconic duo, OutKast, this MC producer often flies below the radar due to the high esteem in which his OutKast partner, Andre 3000, is held. But he's no slouch on the boards or the mic himself. He's the Aquarius and the Quemini, Mr. Sir Lucius Leftfoot, the son of Chico Dusty himself. Big boy, February 1st. Representing the ATL, this next MC helped popularize the trap movement with his independent releases, Trap House and Hard to Kill, back in the mid-2000s. Dropping successful mixtape after successful mixtape, his career was running strong right up until mid-2014 when it was derailed due to imprisonment for gun charges and a few other things. Ever the fighter, however, he dropped a ton of weight in prison and came back strong in 2016, releasing his 10th studio album, The Return of East Atlanta Santa, and most notably, collaborating with Ray Shremmerd on the chart-topping single, Black Beatles, of Mannequin Challenge fame. You guessed it, 
the one and only Gucci, Gucci Man, February 12th. Our next February baby needs no introduction, as his career accomplishments speak for themselves. As the sonic driver behind the world-class Wrecking Crew, NWA, Early Death Row Records, and Aftermath Entertainment, he's had a direct hand in changing the landscape of hip-hop music. Without his many contributions and steady influences over the years, who knows what the West Coast would sound like? Who knows whether or not Eazy e and Ice Cube would become household names? Or Eminem, 50 Cent, The Game, and Kendrick Lamar for that matter. Simply put, he's the single greatest producer hip-hop has ever known, in our humble opinions here at the Rap Flashback. He's a surgeon on the boards, a mega mogul, and I firmly believe that his 1992 solo debut, The Chronic, firmly put this country on a path to where today marijuana has been legalized for medicinal and or recreational use in several states. He's the good doctor, the one and only Andre Young, a.k.a. Dr. Dre, February 18th. And last, but certainly not least, this four-time Grammy nominee has sold two number one albums to his credit and has sold over 15 million records worldwide. This despite a feud with 50 Cent that most will tell you he lost handily and serving two years in prison from 2011 to 2013 for gun possession and tax evasion charges. Despite his struggles, however, he's landed several television and movie roles and is primed for a comeback in 2017 as we eagerly await what he's indicated to be his final album, Coupe de Grasse. That's right, y'all. Give it up for Mr. Clapback himself, who happens to be a leap year baby. Ja Rule, February 29th. And to several others, such as Cameron, the late Jay Dilla, Kid Capri, Ed Lover, Cash Money Mega Mogul, Birdman, Lupe Fiasco, Ice-T, J. Rule the Damager, and Joel Santana. As we so affectionately put it around these parts, Happy motherfucking birthday! And that concludes our show. As always, please remember to catch up on past episodes of the Rap Flashback at the YouTube link below. And to check for intriguing music, entertainment, sports, political, and poetry content at jplineproductions.com. Your one-stop shop for greatness. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you again next month. For my partners, Professor and Spaceman, I am Scholar, signing off. Peace.